Hey guys, welcome back to the channel today. This is Cadman Cycling. Today we'll be riding the park perimeter loop in Central Park. It's 6.1 miles long with an elevation gain of 413 feet. So as we start making our way up to the top of the hill, um, kind of wanted to give everyone a, an idea of what we're looking at here. Um, so currently, I'm in a, a game called Zwift. So Zwift is a virtual reality for cyclists. Um, so my guy here in the blue, as he's making his way up the hill, um, is putting out power and watts to make his bike move. But on the other side of the screen, I'm actually on my bike, which is connected to a trainer. Um, so all, all the stats you see here are actually stats that I'm putting out on my bike and then my guy within this game is actually moving. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool, it's almost like a video game for cyclists. Um, but that's the quick intro of what Zwift is. Uh, so you can see I just went through the starting line um, and I'm, I'm starting this park perimeter loop in Central Park. Um, so Zwift, Zwift has eight worlds within it. Uh, currently I'm in New York City, which is one of them, but they also have Yorkshire, Richmond, Innsbruck, London, France, and Paris, um, parts of cities around the world. But then they also have their own uh, virtual city called Watopia. And Watopia is pretty cool. Uh, I'll show it to you guys in a future video, but Watopia has many different parts to it. So they have a beach, they have a volcano that you can ride up, they have a mountain, they have a desert you can ride through, you can even ride underwater. So Watopia is kind of a, a fake world that they created within Zwift that you can ride around in. But like I said, right now I'm in Central Park um, riding this loop. So on the screen in the top left, you can see um, some pretty cool stats that they show while you're riding. The first is the watts. So right now I'm putting out about 150 to 180 watts. Um, and this is the, the power that, that I'm putting out that helps my bike move forward. And then to the bottom left of the watts, you can see RPM. That's how quickly I'm cycling, what my cadence is um, while I'm moving. So. 90 is rotations per minute. So my I'm moving the pedals at 90 rotations per minute. And then next to that is my heart rate. Um, so currently putting out 130 watts isn't too tough. Um, so my heart rate's around 150. My max heart rate uh, during a race or when I'm really pushing it hard uh, can get up to just, just a little bit over 200. Then moving to the top of the screen, you can see some more information that Swift provides you with while you're um, riding in the game. The first one is miles per hour, so that's how fast my biker is moving through the, the screen. Then we can see how far I've ridden, so currently I'm at 0.7 miles. And then we can see the elevation gain. Um, so my rider has had an elevation gain of 69 feet so far um, during this ride. And then to the right of that, we can see how long I've been riding. So currently just over three minutes. This top screen um, in the center also shows two more stats. The first one is in the orange. You can see a bike with the number 12 next to it. So this is my level within the game. Um, and then if you see that orange tracker above it, that shows how far I am uh, to getting to level 13. So you gain points throughout the game while you're riding just based on distance. Um, so based on the distance I've ridden in the game so far, I'm on level 12, working towards level 13. And then if you move to the right, you can see that little blue cylinder um, that's constantly increasing right now with a little drop next to it. So those are called drops. Right now I have almost 250,000, but those are used uh, as a currency within Zwift. So Using drops, I can buy um, a new bike frame, I can buy wheels, things that make me better within the game. Um, so that currency increases, and then obviously once you buy a new frame, then it would decrease. Um, but as you can see, uh, it, it increases pretty quickly throughout the game. So every, as a few seconds go by, every few seconds I'm gaining hundreds of drops. Um, so that's the game's currency within Zwift. 
So moving forward in the ride, I'm now at 4.3 miles, and I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about the different ride options that are available in Zwift. So currently I'm doing a free ride around New York City. Um, it's kind of up to me. I can make a turn at any point. I can start and stop whenever I want, but there are many other ride options within the game. Riders can also do group rides. They can do group workouts. They can join a race. They can join a Fondo or they can even join time trials. Um, so currently I'm doing the free ride. I've also previously done races in Zwift. Um, I think those are the, the most fun to see how you stack up against everybody else. And Zwift has different categories for those races. Um, so these are in letters, A through E. So A would be the best racers in Zwift, would join the A race, and then it goes down through, D is the lowest category really. Um, and this is based on watts per kilogram, so average power per kilogram that you're putting out. Uh, you would join uh, the group based on your watts per kilogram. Um, I say D is the lowest just because uh, E kind of stands for everyone, so anyone's allowed to join. But as we can see, I'm actually starting a sprint here. So within this course, there is a sprint section. This one's very short. Um, and so you can see my watts are up to almost 600. Uh, I finished the sprint in 9.69 seconds, which on the left hand side, you can see it's actually second out of 652 riders. So of 650 riders currently on this New York City loop that have done the sprint and are still riding currently, um, I got second place. But that's also because I also tried to put out a lot of watts and do as well as I could there. A lot of people on free rides kind of just keep their same wattage or power through the sprint. Um, but I think it's fun just to see how you stack up against everybody else in sprints. So that's cool um, how Zwift has that kind of these smaller sections within the course just so you can see what your time is on these sprints. The last thing I wanted to talk about in this video as we near the end of the loop is power-ups. So just to the right of my wattage in the top left corner, you can see that green feather. Um, this is a power-up that I actually gained as I completed the sprint. So as you complete a sprint or different segments throughout the world, you get these power-ups um, that you can use during a free ride, but they're not quite as useful uh, as they would be during a race. So the feather um, helps me when I'm going uphill. It's actually called featherweight. So it's easier for me to go uphill because I have a, a less amount of weight that I'm carrying up the hill. Uh, another popular one that a lot of people use in sprints is arrow, so that's a blue helmet, I believe. Um, so it would make you more arrow, uh, so less wind resistance while you're trying to go fast in a sprint. There are many others. Um, to be honest, I don't know all of them. I know one of them's undraftable. I think it's a brown burrito, actually. So. Uh, if you're in a sprint and someone's behind you, they wouldn't be able to draft off of you. Um, but there are multiple other power-ups. Most of them I actually haven't gotten before, but just wanted to bring up that as well. So as we make it up the final hill, I just wanted to thank you guys for being here today and watching this video. Um, if you liked it, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, my name's Cadman Cycling, and I can't wait to see you guys on a future video. Thanks, guys. Bye.